So this video starts where the water balance diagram video leave, left off and since it's again a short description of how to walk through and make sure that you can access the tools you need for the lab if you are not on the UO campus. So again, if you're on the UO campus, just by happenstance, you know, when you're working on UO campus, um, you can get around this problem. You don't have to do this, but again, this is if you're, especially if you're off campus, you're not in Eugene, um, you're going to be having to do this and make sure that you're logged into the UO network to use uh, this website. Because so this website right here has the tool I'll be using, but you can see if we go here, if I copy paste into our web, and I want to go here, you know that what will come up will be that the site cannot be reached. Again, if you're off campus and you're not logged into the UO network, this is what's going to happen when you're not able to, uh, even if you're not logged in. So what you're going to have to do is go to this website here. So I have this for you. It's the it.uoregon.edu, VPN, any connect. We'll bring you here. Um, and specifically, you want to be, go through and uh, connect and download and install this software. So this AnyConnect software, when you click on this link here, this AnyConnect, you'll be directed to this page and you'll have to log in so that you download through the UO net uh, this VPN uh, authentic authentication. Um, so essentially, you know, I can enter my information here um, just to show us what would, be, what would happen. So log in, do this, hit enter to log us in. Essentially, it's going to kick you through and, and redirect you to this uh, platform here. Um, for me, um, it doesn't do an automatic or you know, installation. You actually have to do a manual installation. So again, uh, you essentially, you'd click on the link here, on this AnyConnect VPN. When you click on that, it'll uh, download what you need. And then you actually have to run that through and download that and install it for your computer. Um, it looks like here, you know, it'll take a little while to actually download it. Um, just to note, so once that's downloaded uh, specifically on your computer, um, you'll come through and open it up just as an app as you would on uh, any computer. And this is all uh, an example that I'm showing you on a Windows computer, um, but I think it should generally be equivalent in many respects for a Mac. Um, but so once this is installed and, and you open it here, this is, see this example here, and then you'll have to enter uh, within the VPN um, when it says ready to connect this UO uh, vpn.uoregon.edu. And so when you go to hit connect on that, it will then uh, prompt you for again your username and passwords this is the same that you would enter to log on to Canvas to get into your email um, in that duck ID and the password that is related to that. So again, I can enter my information here. And so when I enter that, again, it'll start, cycle, start cycling through. You see that it's establishing that a connection to the UO network there. That will disappear. And so it'll tell, then tell you, okay, it is ready. It's connected. I, you know, we have now connected to the UO network. And so now, finally, once I go back around again, if I go to our website here, once again, if I enter that, copy paste again. It might take a minute. Um, sometimes this load takes a little, few seconds to load in, but voila, now our website here pops up. And so again, this is the tool that you'll be using for the lab connected to this module. But again, essentially you're going to be um, collecting some data on some different locations, and everything that you enter here can um, be modified. So again, you can change your site name to whatever your site name is. Um, so, you know, kind of default that pops up is this example with Eugene, Oregon. Um, you can enter the latitude, latitude, longitude, altitude. Um, you don't, you won't have to play with this plant available water. We'll just assume that that maintains the same. Essentially, what that's saying is the amount of water that can be stored in our soils, um, on different types of soils, as we talk about with biomes, that varies a little bit. Um, but for us, we're just going to leave it um, just as is, um, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Um, and then uh, all the temperatures that you have by month and all the precipitation values by month uh, in January through December. And then you can uh, click on that to update any graphics. And so that will all play out then um, be updated down here. So again, we have our climate graphs on the left. Again, that, all that will vary. And then on our right here, our water balance diagrams as that plays out. So again, you can come through, play with any of these numbers. You know, if we were to start just um, changing our numbers here. Um, we can, you know, all of that we can see um, just 
you know, uh, add some really strange numbers so that um, we can see how that um, ends up. So if I go down and hit our update graphics here, um, note we get you know this really weird spike here that I've just created because our temperature goes way up there. But you know, anything that you add in um, and, and change all of our numbers when you hit update graphics, they'll then um, be shown on the graphics here. And so you're going to be doing that, getting and getting some data for some different locations, updating all that information here, um, looking at the climographs and explaining them and kind of relating them also to the biomes and vegetation types that we'll be talking about in this module as well.